Thing is a fish, a weekly podcast this week coming to you live from up the creek in Greenwich, London. <laughs> My name is Dan Schreiber. I'm sitting here with Anna Tashinsky, Andrew Hunter Murray, and James Harkin. And once again, we have gathered around the microphones, but not with our four favorite facts from the last seven days, but with some of our favorite facts from the last 12 months. This is no such thing as the news meets the book of the year that we didn't get to do, all smashed into a 30-minute <laughs> podcast. So, in no particular order, here we go. Starting with a fact. <laughs> Who wants to jump in? Uh, I can jump in because we're recording this at the same time as the World Cup semi-final is happening oh, between yeah. France and Morocco. And I have a fact where um, 40,000 people in France thought they were watching a World Cup match, Germany versus Japan, on YouTube, but they were actually watching someone playing FIFA 23. <laughs> 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 and apparently this is a group of people in Vietnam, this is what they do. They play FIFA, they pixelate it so that someone watching the game thinks that maybe they're watching a pixelated oh, version of the actual match. Yeah. And they make hundreds and hundreds of pounds by just getting oh, people, people to are, watch. Right, right, because the yeah. ad money or whatever. Wow. It's amazing. Money. That's the thing, they're genuinely... I, I read this too, and it's amazing. And what a letdown when you find out that it's not. <laughs> and how foolish you are. I saw some pictures of the pixelated, and it does kind of look right, but yeah. when they clean yeah. it up, it's very much a video game really um, oh yeah i mean they're good now, it right? is a yeah. video game yeah, yeah, yeah. but i thought i so i haven't played fifa almost ever so oh, yeah. i assumed it's like <laughs> could yeah. we do that could we do that with uh, the podcast like if we sort of play a kind of slightly garbled version <laughs> so it's like <laughs> like that yeah people might listen to that yeah. uh, d- does that mean there are people out there who might think that like wales won the world cup Oh, yeah, because you could totally rig it. Yeah. I, apparently, they're not that gullible, it says. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. But they did, they did they, as James was pointing out, they matched up the right match, so it, everything was fine. The thing that was the kicker was it was a Vietnamese commentary, as you say, yeah. and that's... But I don't think but I would actually, have noticed. But actually, no, that added sort of a realism to it, yeah. because when you go onto YouTube and you're watching some hockey channel, it might be in a different language, right. so it kind of gave realism to it. Yeah. Another news story from the year, uh, uh, the Queen... Queen? Queen died. Oh. What? Oh, wow. Way to bring a downer on it. <laughs> so, so, uh, so just to, to, to cheer us all up, let's remember the greatest tribute paid uh, to Her Majesty, which was by the London tourist attraction Shrek's Adventure. Do you guys remember this? A lot of companies jumped on the bandwagon. Um, Domino's Pizza uh, said everyone at Domino's joins the nation and the world in mourning. Uh, Pizza Express went for a slightly different message, but they also said the the same kind of thing. And Shrek's Adventure London said, Shrek's Adventure London joins millions of mourners around the UK and world in paying tribute to HM uh, QE2. Yeah. I, a... I went to Shrek's Adventure this year. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you went the... to see the Queen. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> the but... queue was shorted by just a bit <laughs> at the uh, Shrek Adventure on the South Bank of London. Wow. Yeah. Actually, I remember a few weeks ago, we never u- I never used this on the podcast, but I found yeah. out that the longest ever theme park ride uh, was eight hours long. So you could have done that ride three times in the time you'd have got to see wow. the Queen. Really? What yeah. was it? What was the ride? It was the Hogwarts one at Universal in America. There's an eight hour long what? Hogwarts ride. Really? Well, it was when it first opened. What, what was like was a broken motor or something? Like, what was the? No, why it was, was it eight like hours so long? Imp- it, everyone wanted to go there. Sorry, the, queue, the, sorry queue. the queue was eight hours long. The queue. <laughs> sorry, you said the ride. You said the ride died. was eight hours long. <laughs> You said you could go on it three times. Well, let's see if I said that by the time the edit goes out, shall we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Imagine not knowing it was an eight-hour ride. Oh. <laughs> <and you're going. laughs> uh. Um, oh dear. Is, uh, so, sorry, oh, on the just, Queen. Oh, yeah. The Queenie thing, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, the, do you remember, so you remember for the day of the funeral itself, the, uh, the, queen, the Queen's coffin was carried on a, a gun carriage. You know, that was the thing, and it was pulled by lots of uh, naval ratings. That was the thing, hundreds of them all pulling it in front and behind to get it at exactly the yeah. right speed. So that carriage, this is a, just an interesting thing. The, that carriage has been kept in a, a sort of storage room. Uh, that's not the interesting bit. Um, <laughs> it's been kept there for 40 years, and every single week its wheels have been oiled and turned around one quarter just in case gravity affected and mis- misshaped the wheels and meant that they wouldn't work properly on right. the day of the funeral. But, because, I mean, gravity doesn't do that. We've got other wheels in the world, haven't we? 
And we don't turn them a quarter every yeah, week. Yeah, it's not like I come back to my car after I haven't driven it for a month and they're all square. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I What's think gravity it, doing to it? Sorry, it's just, it just it. well, it's just, making it flat. It's a heavy carriage. It weighs tons. You oh, know. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you are, and the wheels are obviously quite sensitive, and you just want to, You just. It's so just, what? By shifting your wheel, that's effectively an anti-gravity machine. It's not anti-gravity. No, because you, you, you sorry, even it's out, not, don't you? You even out the effect of gravity. If you flatten yeah. out this bit, if you shift yeah. it round a quarter turn, you flatten out that bit, and then you flatten out that bit. It's like uh, doing something culinary, like dough or something. Mm. There's, there's a culinary <laughs> metaphor in there, which if I cooked, I'd be able to give you right now. Right. Um, Domino's Pizza actually had to change their diet <laughs> in anticipation. I just, I just think that's an interesting example of the extreme thought that, and preparation that had gone into it over yeah. decades. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Yes. Uh, you were talking about the different things that different brands did. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So Morrison's, um, apparently it was said that they turned off the beeps in their checkouts um, <laughs> in deference to the Queen dying. Uh, but they denied it uh, and they said they merely turned down the sound. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> So instead of going beep, it went beep. <laughs> <laughs> Although for someone who's dying, going beep, beep, yes, beep, beep, <laughs> you don't really want that, do you? Yeah. They should have replaced it with the Big Ben bongs. That would have been a nice. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bong. <laughs> she caused uh, confusion as a result of her death in Canada. I don't know if you saw this, but no. in Canada, there was not long after she died, like quite soon, there was a citizen ceremony going on where they were anointing new citizens of Canada and, and doing the pledge and so on. And um, it was all done virtually and there was 140 people there or so. And they started doing the ceremony and they had to stop it and say, sorry, we can't make you Canadians. We don't know who you're pledging to. Is it the queen or is it to the king? Really? Charles? Oh, yeah. really? So they had to like go off and find out who the fuck's in charge. Does that mean that? it doesn't count? If they said the queen instead of the king, it doesn't count? I or? think so, yeah. Really? Because quite a lot of the England team in the World Cup match would sing God Save the Queen instead of God Save the King. So do you think we could get a rematch against France? <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's a crazy stat that I read, is that the Queen was... Uh, she was obviously very old. What was she, 96 years old yeah. when she passed? So that means that of all the people alive in the country, only 100,000 people had been around longer than her. So everyone else of us had her in our life. Really? That's still quite a lot, I think. 100,000? I can't believe 100,000 yeah. people are older than 96. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. feels a lot. It's gone the wrong way. You, um, should have... <laughs> you just needed to present that with a different tone. Yeah, sorry. Do you know 100,000 people have been around longer than the Queen? Wow, that's you... a great oh, fact. Oh, great fact. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that'll make the edit. That will make the edit. <laughs> <laughs> um, just on, on royals, yeah. we're not... The... We're not the only royal family in the world, obviously. The Saudi Arabian royal family forgave Thailand this year for a really interesting thing. I had no idea they've been having this feud for 30 years, but like there haven't been any flights from Saudi Arabia to Thailand for 30 years. There have been no ambassadors, anything like that. Um, and it was caused because 30 years ago, a Thai cleaner who was employed as a servant at the royal palace, the Saudi Arabian royal palace, uh, he was called Krang Krai Tekamon, he stole $20 million worth of gems and diamonds and precious wow. stones. Uh, hid them in some vacuum cleaner bags, because you use what you've got and, like, duct tape them to himself. Oh, he didn't accidentally suck them up and then... <laughs> <laughs> that may have been his excuse in court, I don't oh. know. Um, and he smuggled them out of the country, and I love this, the way he smuggled them out was he got them to Thailand by putting them in a big box of cargo, and then he knew that the Thai officials at the other end would check them at customs unless he did something. So he bribed them with an envelope stuffed with some cash and with a note saying, hey, in my cargo, I've got loads of really bad porn and I'd really rather you didn't search it because that would be really awkward for me. So can you not? Wow. And they didn't. Um, <laughs> I really? Don't really? I would have thought you'd go for something <laughs> slightly less tempting than that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> They're very respectful, the Thai <laughs> officials at customs. Anyway, this year, finally, Saudi Arabia forgave Thailand because it became this huge diplomatic incident. Mm, People nice. were shot dead because of it. Okay. Oh, yeah, there was lots of back and forth, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. But the blue diamond's still missing, so check under your seats before you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Oprah. We're not Oprah. It's, uh, um, th just while we're talking about porn, even though it was just a word, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just gonna quickly grab that and bring it over here. Um, there was a news story which in Manhattan, a congressional candidate called Mike Itkus, he's running and he has a sex positive approach as part of his campaign. So he thought, I'd like to demonstrate how positive I am about sex. 
He released a 13-minute long porn video with himself and a porn star that he filmed and put out to say, I'm a man of my words. Uh, it's called Bucketless Bonanza. And <laughs> it's with Nicole Sage, the porn star. And um, yeah. What party, and, what, sorry, what party is he from? Uh, <laughs> I would say wherever he is, there's a bit of a party going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was um, someone called Alexandra Hunt who ran um, in the third district for Congress. Uh, and she was a former exotic dancer. Uh, but rather than hiding it, she decided to embrace it. And one of her campaign slogans was just elect hoes. <laughs> and the other one said, I may have danced for money, but I'm no corporate whore. Wow. Very good, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's quite good, yeah. Um, there was a guy in Nebraska, Bruce Bostelman, who apologised for repeating the rumour that schools are accommodating children who self-identify as cats by putting litter trays in the corner of the classroom. <laughs> Why are they putting little trays in the No, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, OK. So the premise of his accusation is flawed. Yes, he, right. he accused them of doing something that definitely did not happen. Right. Mm. Um, I got a fact that was sent in by someone, actually, like oh, a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, someone called uh, Brain Blobs on Twitter. So thank you, Brain Blobs. This is a really thrilling thing, guys. Uh, so the, the, it, and this doesn't sound thrilling. But there's, there's been a general conference on weights and measures and some scientists... No, no, get, stay with it. Because some scientists from the National Physical Laboratory of, in the UK attended that conference on weights and measures. And obviously I, need, I don't need to tell you that that's the, that's the authority of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. And so, uh, anyway, the, the point, we've got some new units to celebrate and that's really good. Oh, so cool. a, ron okay. a, a, a measure of weight, a ronogram... A ronogram is... It sounds like you're, it's someone's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and you just send someone called Ron around. <laughs> Hello. What is it? <laughs> I'm Ron. Happy birthday. Oh, that's so much better than what I've got here. Uh, <laughs> so a ronogram is a one followed by 20 zeros, OK? And I think, I think the Earth weighs six ronograms, that's which correct. is really good, because oh. previously we had to say it weighs like 250 million blahs, and even that was the previous biggest unit. Okay. So you see what I mean? Now we can just say it's six ronograms, and that's a much more convenient way of putting it. Great. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's very handy. Yeah, because okay. like, people often ask how much does the Earth weigh, and you yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't Any more know, units? Do you? Well, there's the ronometer. Oh, yeah. so, and the universe is it's one... how you measure runs, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the entire universe is just one ronometer across. What? Oh, that's great. Because it's very big. You, it's huge. You sound surprised, but you have just heard that a ron ronogram is <laughs> it's a large it's a thing. It's bigger than a gram. But I don't think that then helps you understand okay. anything. Well, really? all right, Dan. Okay, Dan. Dan no, 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 that's, that's fair enough. All I right, mean, it's fair enough. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it's an expanding universe. That's well, not eventually a good... it'll be two ron ronometers. Okay, here's a, okay. Be better example, better example. The other end of the scale, they've added some very, very small things as well. Yeah. Right? So what about a quectogram? Okay. Okay. There's a there's a rontogram, which is the weight of an electron. So and this a, oh, this will be the weight of a quark or something well, like it's that. It's the weight of something even. So the weight added to your phone if you get one extra byte of data on oh, your okay, phone. Right. Oh. That is one quectogram. Right. So that has actual mm. weight. Yeah. I swear to God, I emptied my phone no. of some apps the other day, and <laughs> <laughs> it and it floated away. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it felt so much lighter. I was like, wow. Yeah. Jesus. And well, so that's true. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There we it. go. Yeah. Is it, do we think any of these are going to come in handy at Weight Watchers meetings? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> You've lost a ronogram this week. That really is. Wow. Well, actually, on, on the, the Earth uh, and universe, um, worrying news this year is that our days are getting longer and we mm. don't really know why. So there's, there's this quite confusing thing where in the very, very long term, uh, the days are getting slightly longer because the Earth's rotation is slowing because the moon's moving away from us. Right. That's over millions of years. You don't need to worry about that. Um, but in the short term, like the last 50 years, weirdly counterbalancing that, they've been getting shorter, which we haven't really known why. Um, and now suddenly, the last couple of years, they've gradually started getting longer. Don't know if anyone's noticed here. Um, the extra... Felt it during Andy's bit a tiny bit, actually. Um... <laughs> uh, so there's a new measure of time, the Andy Graham. It's, <laughs> before... <laughs> it's only a matter of minutes, but you will age. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we think it might be because of the Chandler wobble. <laughs> what? Chandler wobble. Could that be any more weird? 
<laughs> Lovely. For someone who I know has never seen an episode <laughs> never of Friends. <laughs> Someone who's read, read the Wikipedia page of Friends. <laughs> Halfway through, I was thinking I'm out of my death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you nailed it. Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hey everyone, this week's episode of Fish is sponsored by GiveWell. Yes, GiveWell is the organisation that will help you to give well. And Mm. specifically to give well to people who are having a less fortunate Christmas and New Year period than you might be. So GiveWell spends over 30,000 hours each year researching charitable organisations to make sure that they are the highest impact, most evidence-backed organisations. And then they reveal their research to you. So if you want to give money to charity, you can be sure that you're giving it as effectively as you can. That's right. So no more worries about thinking, God, where has my money actually gone when I've donated to this charity? GiveWell is specifically built to let you know that the money is going direct to the source to help out the situation that you are donating to. And so far, over 100,000 donors have done this. They've raised over a billion dollars for various charities, and they've worked out that they would have saved 150,000 lives so far and improved millions more along the way. That's right. It really is the best way to give to charity, and all their research is available for free so go to givewell.org slash uk now to work out where you're going to donate your money and it's a registered uk charitable incorporated organization which of course means that eligible uk taxpayers can take tax deductions for their donations that's right so head to givewell.org slash uk find the charity that you think you'd love to donate your money to and know that it's going to the best place possible do it now On with the show. On with the podcast. Do you know um, whose time on Earth has been made longer by one to two years as of six months from now? Oh, uh, yes, I think I... It's, I mean, despite the way you phrased that, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I actually do. So it's, it's um, South Koreans. Right. South Koreans oh. have just extended their life by one to two years, and that's going to happen <laughs> between June of next year because they usually, in South Korea, the way that they measure your, uh, your age is when you're born, you were born one years old. So they say that you're, you know, nine months is rounded up to 12 months, you are one. And if you're born, I think it's like close to December, then you become two because it just is a new year. So you go, you're two quite quickly if you're born in, let's say, November. So that's been a thing where people have always found confusing if they go overseas because their birth certificate or their passports, we all carry our birth certificates, right? (laughs) Um, Their passport will say an age, but they'll say a different age. And it's really confusing. So now South Korea has decided to abandon the whole thing of saying you're one or two when you're born. And they're going to be like the rest of the world's uh, metric, or I guess the majority of the world. Yeah, it's really sad. That's so sad. sad. How come? Well, I just think it's a cool, interesting um, thing to do. Yeah, it's an interesting cultural difference. Um, Yeah, don't Ah. do it, Korea. Ah. Go back. Uh, Because it would be cool if, as you claimed, they're adding two years to their life. (laughs) And if that's how they've tricked them into it, (laughs) then yeah. Oh, I think if I could... I'm 38. If I could be like... I'm now 36. I think I, that would make my day. No, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't be. You would have. You. You're you, still gonna die on the same yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, yeah, but and it's soon. But my, sooner than you think. <laughs> but I will have died two years younger. <laughs> also, people. More people will say such a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who went too soon? Too there soon. were only a hundred thousand people older than Dan Schreiber. <laughs> Uh, can I drag us quickly back to sport? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, well, actually, one thing I just wanted to say about Southgate, which, Gareth Southgate... <laughs> sorry, yes, I, I'm not familiar... I, you like, were I thinking the tube station, weren't you? I was actually thinking a scandal. <laughs> like, <laughs> Southgate. Did you hear about Southgate? Um, so, in, football manager for England. England's yeah. football manager. And, yeah. uh, you know, everyone thinks he's a really great guy now, so obviously he was the bad guy in the 90s because for international listeners, he missed a penalty at the Euros. Bit of a crisis for his popularity. Everyone loves him now because he wears waistcoats and England's a quite a good team. But I found out how he met his wife. And oh. it is ropey. Oh. Uh, what so... do you mean, with ropes? <laughs> <laughs> It's actually not that bad. But he saw a woman he fancied who worked in a shop in Croydon. And so he, first of all, would like loiter around the shop pretending he was looking at the clothes there a lot to try and talk to her. What sort of shop? Clothes shop, I reckon. Oh, yeah. 
actually a hardware store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Picking up like, padlocks and going, I love this T-shirt. Yeah, I love right. this high-vis jacket. <laughs> <laughs> OK, sorry, so he, he's hanging around the shop. He's hanging around the shop. He yeah. finds out she's got a very serious live-in boyfriend. Uh, but it happens, he goes to a restaurant one day and her and her boyfriend are sitting nearby at the table and he senses that they're having a bad time together, you know? He senses this relationship on the rocks. So when the boyfriend's not looking, he sneaks over to her and drops a letter in her hand with his number A letter? It. A full... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bloody hell. <laughs> 18 pages. Wow. Um... <laughs> A uh, note, I suppose a note, yeah, yeah. and um, saying, you know, when this cocks up, which clearly it's going to, oh. why didn't you give me a call? And she did. And she did. And they had their dates in Tesco car park for a long time, because they had to be secret, what? I what? think. Oh, so she hadn't left, they just started dating secretly? Yeah, I, yeah. Wow, this is a gossipy I, story, isn't I, it? <laughs> a Tesco car park is not a very secret place, either. It's, a, it's actually open to anyone who wants to go yeah. there. I assume her boyfriend shopped at Sainsbury's. So yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I guess so, yeah. It's the only safe place for them. Wow. Anyway, so that is some hot goss from 30 <laughs> years ago. 13. About Gareth Southgate. Are they still together? Yeah, they are. It's very sweet, actually. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, yeah. Well done, Gareth. <laughs> I got sports news here as well. Uh, this is to do with the world of badminton. Um, you'll okay. all know this, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> But just to remind you, four Chinese badminton players were put on probation for two years this year after failing to try their best to win uh, oh. in 2018. So oh. the match happened in 2018. They finally had the thing. Basically, um, the people that were watching the match noticed that either side were sort of not really given it. They were just sort of like dicking about, and that apparently is illegal in badminton because but it's the, be they did it for a very good strategic reason, right? What, what, both sides? Yeah. Is it so they can play a different team in the next round? Yeah, that? exactly. I thought you were going to say maybe they'd been paid to throw the match. Oh. No, you know? it was, oh. I, I'm pretty, I think it was because the, they, if whoever won would be playing the better team, and I believe it was two Chinese, a Chinese team, wasn't it? Yeah. Who, if they won, were going to end up playing the other Chinese team. Oh. And so that was silly because they want China to win. So it's pointless China playing China because they're going to knock one of them out. Right. And so they all won. And then I think, was the other one Korean? I don't know, apparently you know this way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing. I'm just like crystal ball. Um, yeah, I think yeah. then the other team were like, hang on, you're trying to lose. We're going to try and lose as well. And, and, then they, and then they got picked up, and then in the second half, they kind of went for it properly, because I think they realised we've been caught out. Um, yeah, yeah. But now they're banned, yeah, for playing shit, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, in 2024, the Olympics are going to be in Paris. This is a fact about next year, I should say, um, because this year they unveiled their mascot they're going to have, uh, and everyone said the same thing, that it looks rather like a clitoris. Oh. Uh, and the woman who designed it, when they said to her, you know, it's a bit weird that your mascot looks like a clitoris, she said, I'm so happy after everything that's happened with feminism that people can now recognise the clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the mascot. I, I didn't think it looked like <laughs> anything at all. And they did find, I'm sure everyone saw this today, they found the, um, the snake's clitoris for the first time, yeah. haven't they? Oh. Uh, it's got two. It's yeah. got two. Two? Yeah, because yeah, they have... Hemi penis, don't they? Like right. double penises, so right. they have double clitorises as well. Oh, good for them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few records. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you, want a, do you want a little quiz? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh. Right, this record was broken in January by Laura Noonan of Sydney. It's the most cartoon characters identified in one minute. How many? 20. Okay. In one minute, 40. 31. 106. Come wow. on. Imagine that. That's a lot. Yeah. How... how Identified what, like, by photos or...? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, some kind of pictorial... <laughs> like, like a voice, I guess. I, I oh, thought my vo yeah, I thought a voice No, I think it was pictures, you know, Popeye, right, okay. Betty Boop, Donald Duck, that one, that okay. one you know. Okay, question two, incredible. question two. All right, all right, all right. February record, Franz Huber from Milan. Most swords swallowed while hanging upside down. <laughs> okay, it's... I've seen, I reckon I've seen people swallowing around six or seven, so I'll go for that, six. Okay. One. Hundred. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't let me finish. One hundred. <laughs> yeah. You're both right. It's a hundred swords. No, of course it's not. It's, uh, it's nine. Oh, okay. Ah. Although, is that if you're upside down, is it still swallowing something? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it if it's not? <laughs> it's just like it's just sort of p pushing something up, isn't it? <laughs> you know, like swallowing is where you, is where you swallow something down and it goes in 
you know, it just still ends up in your stomach though, no matter yeah, which way you're orientated. Yeah, I think you've forgotten the definition of the word swallow. Okay. Well. You can't like say, oh, I didn't swallow those diamonds, <laughs> officer, because I was upside down at the time. <laughs> Please go on your way, sir. <laughs> we legally can't arrest you. Okay, fine, fine, fine. All right, final one, final one. March record. Yeah. Uh, this is Miyabi Kugimachi of Tokyo. Most socks sorted with one foot in one minute. <laughs> And I want an answer in pairs, please. How many pairs of socks sorted? Half. Half of one pair? <laughs> <laughs> James has lowballed it. Uh, 30? 25? Pairs? 400. 12 point. <laughs> Four, again. 400 <laughs> pairs of socks. I half listened to the question. Eight pairs of, <laughs> eight pairs of socks per second. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't. I don't know or care who got it right. I think it was Anna. I think it was fifteen. <laughs> pairs. You think? What have you? No, no, no. I know. I just can't remember what everyone said. <laughs> oh right. Okay. I was, right. So this... angry with you for guessing four hundred that I kind of forgot Anna's answer. I think you guessed sort of twenty-five. Around 25. that. Yeah, oh, there we but go. I meant single, so twelve point five. I thought. <laughs> 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 wasn't this? I think I saw this, and wasn't she known on YouTube for foot-related content? Anyway, I believe the person who won. <laughs> well, maybe I came across her in a different walk of my life. But oh, right, what is, okay. What is foot-related content? I know it means sexual stuff, but what, what does that? But what does that mean? I actually don't know what that means. Sec I, just sexy photos of feet. I don't know. I guess it's sorting socks with your feet. I don't know. I've never sorting socks with your feet. Yeah, that, well, that's what she's doing. <laughs> that's what this, this lady was I, doing. Again, I didn't hear the question. <laughs> I, OK, I have a related fact on these kind of people. It's about influencers who do strange things. Oh, OK. Uh, and this is Stephanie Matto, who sold farts in a jar. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she managed to get very, very sick because she was trying to fart too many times because she got so many orders, she was trying to make as much as possible. And what that meant, because I found another story in the same week, is that you can end up in hospital if you fart too much and if you don't fart enough. Because mm. there was a woman called Cara Clark who got extreme stomach pain when she'd been holding in her farts too much. And then this influencer, Stephanie Matto, had been farting too much and she ended up in hospital as well. Were they in the waiting room at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> but what, what that says to me is there's an optimum amount. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, if, you yeah, ever, yeah. Well, if you read the uncut version of Goldilocks, <laughs> there is that scene <laughs> where <laughs> one of the bears in hospital... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, was, why was the second woman holding in her farts? Uh, because she had a new boyfriend. Oh, uh, no. And she's, yeah, she's fine now. They're, they right. had a laugh about it. OK. That's really uh, good. So Stephanie, what you're saying is we're all walking a kind of, quite a bit, quite a thick line of... Yes, I yeah, think yeah. so. Uh, but Stephanie has now retired from selling farts in jars. Uh, you'll be glad to hear. Her family are glad to hear. Uh, but she is now selling her fart jars as NFTs. Uh, OK. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's, um, can, I, can I mention one of the big stories of the year? Um, yeah, go on. The very infamous Chris Rock, Will Smith moment, oh, yeah. slap at the yeah. Oscars. I fell in love with this story because it was just a very good example of how very quickly we all jumped to insane theories to sort of justify why it may have happened. So there were two theories that came out immediately after it happened. One was that someone said that the slap is much less interesting when you realize that Will Smith almost certainly went through the Scientology courses that tell you to unapologetically use slaps and physical force to let a fellow Scientologist know they've done something wrong. So the idea is that in the training, they just go whapang on the side of your face because they're bored or whatever, and that's them letting you know that can we, they can don't Can we want introduce to that to the podcast? Um, <laughs> please, please no, please no. <laughs> I won't last one. Tell episode. us some more unit facts, Andy. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> But yeah, so but then uh, Scientologists, <laughs> including ex-Scientologists, jumped to the immediately saying, no, no, that's not a thing. Okay. My favorite one, though, of all the theories that came out is that someone noticed just before Will Smith came up to slap him on stage that Chris Rock had dared to say the word Macbeth on stage, which you I should think. never do. Uh -huh. The curse of Macbeth. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anna. You know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but so just a few moments before, he congratulated Denzel Washington on his performance on the tragedy of Macbeth. And so now, if you go to the Wikipedia page for incidences after invoking the word <laughs> Macbeth, 
you will find Will Smith slapping wow. Chris Rock. But isn't, isn't that only a viable theory? And I can't remember his wife's name. Maybe it is Macbeth. It's not Lady Macbeth. If, <laughs> is it not? <laughs> Will Smith's wife would have to be called Macbeth. Because I believe it was accompanied with a, an explanatory, explanatory words, wasn't it? By Will Smith. He didn't want to leave us in the dark, didn't he? Say, get. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. Remove my wife's name from yeah, your yeah. mouth, please. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. <laughs> His wife's not called Macbeth, so that's where that theory completely falls down. But no. aside from that, well, that's the only reason he'd be annoyed about her, him saying Macbeth. Yeah. No, the, the whole idea of the Macbeth curse is that it's out of your control what then happens. So then he goes on to tell a joke he thinks is going to be fine, and the curse takes over. Oh, there. you're not saying Will Smith was furious because he <laughs> broke the rule. I thought that. No, yeah. The, yeah, the way you told it, it did sound like. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh, okay. Scottish play, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to go up and tell him. <laughs> Stop the podcast! Stop the podcast! Hi, everybody. We are sponsored this week by Babbel. That's right. Do you want to learn a language? Do you want to learn in 15-minute long lessons? Do you want to learn using lessons that have been created by over 150 language experts? Yes, I want to do that. Well, there we go. Anna, I have the place <laughs> for you. It's Babbel. Oh, my God. What were the chances? I have already used Babbel for a couple of years. You can have actually simulated conversations in the language of your choice. So you can sort of feel like you've got, let's say, a Polish friend, when in actual fact, uh, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to up not only your language skills, but your friendship group, Babbel <laughs> is actually offering our listeners three months free with the purchase of a three month subscription. So head to babbel.com slash podcast 22, use the offer code no fish, and you're going to get those extra three free months on top of your purchase. That's right. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E l.com slash podcast 22 that's the numbers 22 use the code no fish all one word and you'll get that extra three months free okay on with the show on with the show <laughs> um on celebrities another oh, yeah. celebrity of the year was liz truss mm. and <laughs> A cheer of slight recognition in the room, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Can you just, for, um, for any international listeners, can you just say who? Mm, yes, so yeah. she was the short-lived five minutes of fame Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She still lives. She's still alive. She lives. She's still alive. <laughs> yeah. Liz Truss lives. <laughs> she wasn't Prime Minister for long. If, God, how long was it? 37 days? 49 Four, days. 49 days, actually. That's not too bad, is it? Um... <laughs> But she, I learned Ooh. this year that she was often compared to Margaret Thatcher, obviously, because she tried to compare herself to Margaret Thatcher quite a lot. <laughs> and she actually played Margaret Thatcher in a school play when she was eight years old. Wow. Oh, really? What the, uh, so what was the school play? Macbeth. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, no, I, like, I, I was in a couple of plays school at school, and none, none of them featured a Margaret Thatcher character. <laughs> it was, it, it, it was, it was a, a nativity. Nativity. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the school play was the 1983 election, so... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was a weird... <laughs> they did things differently in Paisley in the 80s. Um, <laughs> I think the uh, Thatcher election was going on at the time, and so yeah. they reenacted it, right. and they asked people if they wanted to be certain candidates, and they said, would you like to be Margaret Thatcher and try to get people on your side? Right. And um, then everyone would vote for who they liked best, who, who was pitching their political theories. And Liz Truss actually got zero votes, not even voting for herself. <laughs> oh, because she, she, was, uh, she was left wing at the time, because her parents are quite left wing, and she wouldn't yeah. have been a Thatcher supporter until much later. No. Well, what even she at uni, said she was, was a Lib Dem. That yeah. yeah, that probably was it. What she said was she knew the Tories were so unpopular in Paisley at the time that she couldn't be right. seen voting for Margaret Thatcher, even wow. though it was her in this instance. Um, my, my school did the 1997 election, and it's a good, it's a good fun... Fun thing to do. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. who did you play? John Prescott. Well, we didn't do it as a play. It was oh. just, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, Michael Gove wasn't around then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who were you? I Anne Whittacombe. I was. <laughs> no, I, I, we weren't playing individual people. It was just like it was done as a, like I can't remember. There was a talk about it or something. Well, you, it was a, oh. you played people talking about the election. <laughs> no, it wasn't a play. For fuck's sake! <laughs> it's, it's not Should a we play. talk about the letters? It's not then? a play. We got to oh, talk yeah, about yeah, the letters. Yeah. The trust, oh, the, the trust lettuce, the lettuce that lasted longer than oh, this trust. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, there's a big argument between left and right on Twitter, like there always is, um, with the right wing saying that actually there was some discoloration in the lettuce <laughs> and maybe it hadn't lasted as long as Liz Truss. Mm. Um, but the Atlantic said that it was still usable in a salad. <laughs> 
so that we know counts. what happened to it in the end? Um, yeah, um, straight afterwards, for the next month, it was doing personalised messages on Cameo for Stop £13. It. Pounds. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> serious, That's so yeah. Funny. That's really good. Uh, there was a really good quote about Boris Johnson in the Times this year. Uh, Boris Johnson for international list is another prime minister that we've had this year. <laughs> 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 this is around about the time when he was flying back from his holiday to claim the title of prime minister again and then decided against it. And um, there was a school report written by one of his teachers when he was 18, and it was just so good and prescient. So the school report said, Boris sometimes seems affronted when criticised for what amounts to a gross failure of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and surprised at the same time that he was not appointed captain of school for next term. I think he honestly believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. Uh, right. Spooky. We were talking just before the show. Do you, do you guys remember the Sue Gray report? This time last year, that wasn't, that wasn't out yet. It was that's all happened this year. Oh, we're wow. getting some no's over there, so you're going to have to refresh people. Nah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really boring. Uh, yeah. Another Boris-like person, Jair Bolsonaro, in mm -hmm. Brazil. Uh, he's been away from the public eye for the last couple of months, and no one's really known what's happening. There's been a lot of rumours. Uh, what, the since the election? Because uh, he, he, he lost, lost didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the vice president said that um, he'd had COVID three times, uh, even though he denied it existed. Uh, <laughs> And he had a skin disease which stopped him from being able to put on his trousers. <laughs> 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 and so he couldn't do any public <laughs> events. Oh, you can enough. still do Zoom calls, though, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Um, we should think of wrapping up in very... Not oh. just yet, but soonish. Can I say a science fact? Yeah, of course. So the one thing that we've just been getting this year, it's been in the works for years and years, the James Webb Space Telescope, which was launched, I think at the very, very end of last year, and we've just got the first photos back this year. It's amazingly exciting, because we're seeing lots and lots of the universe in you know, completely new ways, and I've just been reading a bit about it. It's so sensitive, the James Webb te Space Telescope, it could, it could detect the warmth of a single bee that was on the moon from Earth. Okay. Wow. Isn't that good? Well, from we don't 200... have bees on the moon, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe now we'll find out if we do have bees on the moon, Dan. Yeah. And do we? <laughs> well, no, but... It's, uh... That no, is but it's, quite amazing. Yeah, it's taking these pictures. They get called the baby pictures of the universe because it's photographing light from 13 and a half billion years ago. Yeah. Really, really long time ago. So but... you can see what was happening just after the universe exactly. was born. Yeah. Well, that made me think that all of our baby photos are still travelling out into... <laughs> yeah? into space, <laughs> as in if you were far enough away, you'd be able to see yourself as a baby, you know, what you were up to. Yeah. You'd be able to see well, your own baby photos yeah, happening. I guess James, so. you're a physicist. Can you'd you have just... to be firing them out somehow. Like, for instance, broadcast stuff. Yeah. Um, something that's broadcast over the airwaves, um, that would go into space, and that could be seen for a long time. So technically, no such thing as the news is still on. <laughs> <laughs> we got cancelled on Earth, but if you're on Alpha Centauri, you can watch it live. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you think the owner of, or the originator of the James Webb Space Telescope spams their friends on WhatsApp constantly with annoying photos of the baby universe? Yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> <Is that Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Quite ugly, but they have to say something nice. <laughs> um, I've got a, a bit of a silly story here, which I just loved. Um, there was a guy in China, two guys in China, that were picking pine nuts from a tree recently. And the tree was a bit high, so they thought the way we'll get to it is let's just fill up a hydrogen balloon and we'll attach ourselves to that. So they go up in it and they're picking their pine nuts, um, but then the balloon becomes untethered. Uh, one of the guys jumps out, the other one's too afraid to. Um, he disappeared for two days into the air. <laughs> he went on a 200 mile long journey, <laughs> really high in the sky. They were monitoring as he went. Fortunately, he had his mobile phone and he was constantly <laughs> calling and running low on battery going, what do I do? And they had to navigate him to slowly let air out over somewhere that was landable. But for two days, he just fucked wow. off. <laughs> yeah. What an adventure. So <laughs> it's like up. So yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got any yeah. last stories? Um, were, in Nigeria, they seized thousands of donkey penises because they were mislabeled as cow penises. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there's a romance novelist who wrote an online essay called How to Murder Your Husband, and she was sentenced to life for murdering her husband. Yeah. <laughs> 
The old double bluff. It doesn't always work. <laughs> and according to a recent study at the University of Singapore, the three funniest word pairs in the English language are playboy parrot, weasel penis, and spam scrotum. <laughs> We'll try them in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's it. That is all of our facts from the year. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get in contact with any of us about the things that we've said over the course of this podcast, we can be found on our Twitter accounts. I'm on at Schreiberland. Andy. At Andrew Hunter M. James. At James Harkin. And Anna. You can email podcast at qi.com. If you want to get in touch with us as a group, we're on at No Such Thing, or you can go to our website, no such thing as a fish.com. All of our previous episodes are up there, so do check them out. There's a bunch of other fun things up there. Check it out too. Uh, thank you very much up the creek for being here for our big end of year no such thing as a new smashed with the book of the year bonanza uh, and we'll be back again next week with another episode we'll see you then goodbye yeah.